Hi, welcome to uh, week six. Uh, this course is literally moving by in a flash. Uh, we only have about two weeks left in the course. Week six is all about showing you some different approaches to grouping with uh, students who have special needs. So the first part of the course, um, I felt like it was very important for us to review generally what, what it means uh, for teachers to, ha to teach um, within inclusive settings. And then I wanted to focus in on um, particular special needs that are not that weren't based in physical um, s uh, severe uh, challenges and also um, not the um, major categories of um, um, students who have uh, students with disabilities such as autism because um, it's such a, a large frame that I felt like autism should actually be a course all by itself in regards to if you're planning on differentiating because there's so many different uh, levels of the spectrum. So with that being said, um, I focus in on learning disabilities because they range as well, but we see a lot more of those and also on um, emotional uh, behavior disorders that a lot of students have because those two are um, sometimes typical within inclusive settings. There's a few others uh, that they list within the umbrella of those two areas, but in general terms, you'll see someone with like a um, authority, um, I forgot what it's called. oppositional oppositional um, defiance issue, which falls under the umbrella of emotional behavior disorder sometimes. So hopefully those chapters have provided you with some useful resources with some of the students who may be categories in those um, areas. If you're looking for a more in-depth um, analysis of one of those or um, broader um, areas of uh, special education, um, and different types of um, disabilities in those categories. I can definitely provide you resources, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with uh, putting everything into one tiny little week. Uh, so <laughs> this week we kind of wrap things up and look at groupings. And the way I wanted to look at groupings uh, was a little bit different. I know that a lot of you have experience with um, grouping students in different ways. Um, who have various disabilities, and thank you for sharing your stories with me um, through the discussion areas. So I wanted to look specifically at how we arrange what we currently do uh, by giving you a different viewpoint of the, the um, current things that we use. So um, just uh, consider, you know, within inclusive settings, uh, we have different challenges and grouping students who range in academic, social, cultural, physical, and emotional uh, backgrounds. Um, this can be huge, especially if you're focusing in on academic success. So remember, one of the things I'm constantly learning is that, especially with my students who are challenged with ELL complexities, um, that it doesn't always work best for students if you actually pair them with other students without an actual um, consideration of what will happen when that pairing occurs. So you want to be very strategic and that's what I'm hoping the four strategies that I found will help with. After completing this unit, hopefully you will be able to know cooperative learning grouping techniques that foster positive learning experiences among students with disabilities and those within general education settings. Remember this is not um, specific towards a uh, student who may have a severe um, version of one of the disabilities or um, has autism, uh, you will have to uh, navigate uh, how you instruct those students a little bit differently. Like I have a student in my honors class who is on the autism spectrum and how I um, allow him to collaboratively work is very different. Um, and I also have to um, reassess and restructure what I do every day because sometimes he'll get wrapped up in the excitement and then he um, cannot finish his work or he gets to, uh, behind because he's um, so in engaged in the social aspect that he um, doesn't pay attention to the other things. So um, just keep that in mind when you're going through this unit. There are two things that I wanted to accomplish, which was uh, to assist you in employing cooperative learning techniques effectively and then approaches to cooperative group designs and learning activities for inclusive settings. For the end of this week, we have two things that are due. If you read uh, 
as much as you can. I know that you're very busy and that this is the end of the quarter. So I hope you're not staying up all night and uh, <laughs> doing some crazy grading. I know for myself, I will be um, finishing upgrading. I made sure to keep on track of um, returning students' items. So um, I will be grading the things that you turned in last week, hopefully between Sunday and Monday, and then um, I will be moving on uh, to grading your um, submission um, items. Actually, yeah, submission items um, by Friday, the midterms. So um, keep in mind these two things. The reading is fairly simple. It just talks about the research concerning cooperative learning, um, cooperative grouping designs, and um, students with special needs. And then the final project, if you start working on it early, um, you should be fairly successful in completing it before the project is due. Um, I'll put a link up just in case you want to submit the final project check-in early. Um, because I know that um, the week that our course ends is Nevada Day, October 25th. So hopefully you finish early and you can have that day off. I think that's about it for um, this uh, recording. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. And again, I uh, hope you enjoy um, this week's lecture.